Hi. This lesson is all about the internal structure of the Earth. What actually goes on beneath the surface of our planet? For this, you'll need uh, the notes that accompany uh, this homework. Okay, then. let's go. The Earth has a layered structure. It's not uniform all the way through. And we can actually split the Earth up into four uh, concentric layers. So concentric means they all, if you like, have the same centre point. And each subsequent layer completely surrounds the layer below it. This uh, expanded diagram tries to illustrate this. If we look, though, at these layers, we need to think about, well, firstly, what they are, what they're made of, and what properties they possess. Because actually what's happening within the deep Earth has a significant influence on geological processes at the Earth's surface. So it's really important for us to understand what's actually going on at depth. These four layers are from the surface going down, the crust, then we have the mantle, then we have the outer core, and finally the inner core. That goes all the way down to the centre of the Earth, about 6,378 kilometres down. Although that distance varies depending on whether we're on the pole or at the equator. The Earth is a bit fatter around the middle. Uh, than it is at, uh, at the poles. So the Earth isn't uh, spherical. It's what we call an oblate spheroid. So if we look at each of these layers then, clearly they vary in thickness, but there is a distinct arrangement to them. They, you know, there, is, there are clear differences between each of these layers, which is how we know whether they're there. Let's have a look at this cross-sectional diagram. Some of these uh, are labelled up. Let's, let's start with some labels here. We can also think a little bit more about these uh, different layers and their properties. Firstly, we have the continental crust. Now, the continental crust, uh, it's the bit that we live on. It's varies a lot in thickness. Um, the figure given there, 30 to 65 kilometres, is a reasonable average. Uh, there are places it gets a bit thinner than that. Uh, there are a small number of places where it can get thicker than that, maybe up to about 90 kilometres underneath the highest part of the Himalayas. Generally, the thicker parts of the continental crust are where we have the mountains. The thinner parts are the ancient lumps of... Uh, continental crust called cratons. Now the continental crust is made uh, obviously of a wide variety of things. If we had to generalize wildly about its composition we would describe it as being silicic. Maybe silicic igneous rocks would be a reasonable um, a reasonable generalization uh, about its composition. Although we do know the continental crust is very varied uh, in terms of age, in terms of um, exactly the rocks it's made of. The density of the continental crust is about 2.6. The second layer we've got labelled here is the oceanic crust. Again, it's part of the surface. This crust, though, is much thinner than the continental crust. This, uh, on average, is about five or six kilometres thick. There's a few places where it's a bit thicker, up to about ten kilometres thick, but that's about as thick as it gets. The oceanic crust is uh, sits lower on the Earth's surface. It's why it's at the bottom of the oceans. This forms the lower parts of the Earth's crust. 
and it's much more uniform in composition. If we had to um, generalize about the oceanic crust, we describe it as being mafic igneous rocks. The density of oceanic crust is a bit higher, maybe 2.9 to 3, which is the reason it sits uh, lower at the Earth's surface than the continental crust. That, that increased density means it, it sits that little bit lower. Continental crust with less, de uh, less dense rock sits that bit higher, fortunately. Layer 3, then, is the upper mantle. And layer 4 is the lower mantle. Now, we don't really need to distinguish too much uh, about these uh, the, the difference between these layers. It, it's really very slight. The mantle as a whole uh, is made of rock. And if to generalize about its composition, we describe it as being ultramafic igneous rock, pyridotite. Now, the mantle uh, forms the bulk of the Earth, something like 70% of the Earth's volume. Massive uh, layer within the Earth and hugely important for what's actually happening on the crust. The crust is this very, very thin layer at the surface. The mantle, much thicker, and as a result, what's happening in the mantle does have an effect on the crust. The density of the mantle uh, varies. And it's such a thick layer uh, it's almost bound to, to vary. At the base of the uh, crust, density of the mantle is maybe 3.4. Um, the base of the upper mantle then goes to about 4.4. By the time uh, we're at the base of the lower mantle, we're at a density of about 5.6. So you can see the Earth is getting denser with depth. Layer 5 is the outer core. The outer core is very different from the mantle. The outer core is, is made of iron. Well, mostly iron, there's some nickel in there, probably some sulphur. Okay, But we can generalise to say the outer core is made of iron. There's a significant difference in the density of this material. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a big change, big jump in the density as we go from the mantle into the outer core. The density of the outer core um, is about 9.9 .9, uh, at its um, outermost edge. And at the base of the outer core, it gets to about 12.2. So the density almost doubles as we go from the lower mantle into the outer core. The final layer we look at is the inner core. This is right down at the, the centre of the Earth. The inner core is also made of iron. And its density is, is higher again from 12.8 down to 13.1. Okay. So those are our, our four main layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Now on this diagram as well, we also have some boundaries that are marked. The boundaries are marked with letters. Boundary A is the Mohorovicic discontinuity, named after the Croatian seismologist who discovered it, Andrija Mohorovicic, um, who discovered uh, how earthquake waves um, change and sometimes reflect or uh, will speed up as they go deeper in the earth, showing that there's this boundary between the crust and the mantle. We perhaps more commonly know it as the far easier to spell moho. Uh, 
Boundary B is the Gutenberg discontinuity. Again, named after uh, uh, the person who um, largely discovered it, uh, Bino Gutenberg, a German-American uh, seismologist who worked with Charles Richter in California to uh, determine uh, some significant changes uh, in the Earth at that point. You know, his work um, really helped to define uh, the Earth's internal structure. This work was built on as well by uh, the discoverer of boundary C. Uh, this is the Lehman discontinuity, named after uh, Inga Lehman, uh, who's a, a Danish seismologist. She uh, was working on earthquake waves uh, received in New Zealand that had been generated on the other side of the world and noticed differences. So these boundaries represent the um, transition from one material to another. So we need to think a little bit more about some of these other properties. This diagram summarises some of these changes. So far we've looked at composition and we've talked about density. There are also differences in temperature. The earth gets hotter with depth. So the base of the, the crust uh, is about a thousand degrees centigrade. So we go from surface temperatures to a thousand degrees centigrade by the time we get to the base of the crust. It's actually the, pit, the point uh, in the earth where temperature increases most rapidly. So at the Moho, we have a temperature of about 1,000 degrees. At the Gutenberg discontinuity, the temperature of the Earth is about 3,700 degrees centigrade. And by the time we get to the uh, Lehman discontinuity, the temperature is uh, 4,300 degrees centigrade. It, it's a hot place. We're going to talk more about uh, these changing temperatures uh, in a subsequent lesson. The other property we need to consider is the state of matter. The crust is a solid, it's a cold, brittle, solid material. The mantle, as we, see, as we will see, is also solid. But the mantle has properties which will allow it to deform and possibly to flow. We'll need to investigate the, that in a lot more detail. The outer core is a liquid. So the iron that makes up the outer core is liquid. The iron that makes up the inner core is solid. Now, we'd think that's the wrong way around. We'd expect the inner core, which is hotter, to be the liquid, and the cooler outer core to be a solid, but it's not. What we're seeing there is the effect of changing pressures. So the melting temperature of the inner core will be higher than the actual temperature of the Earth. So it's a solid. The melting temperature at uh, for the slightly lower pressure outer core is less than the temperature of the Earth at that point, so it's a liquid. Okay. Now this does beg a big question. We can't drill into the deep Earth. Despite what Hollywood would have us think, we can't get there. We have literally scratched the surface of the Earth with geological drilling and mining. Some of the deepest mines are about four kilometres deep, out of a total depth to the centre of 6,370 something kilometres. So we need to think about what the evidence is for this. I've given you an awful lot of assertions in this lesson, but I haven't proved anything. We need to think about 
Where's the evidence for this? How do we know that these things are the case? But as we watch the sunset over planet Earth, that I think is the topic for another lesson. What we need to make sure of is that we're aware of the, the properties of each of these layers of the Earth, that we've got our, our, our basic knowledge of what these uh, different layers are like, so that we can then start to uh, understand where the um, evidence for these has actually been derived from. So make sure your notes are, are detailed and complete for each of those uh, four main layers. And we'll talk about the evidence in a subsequent lesson. I'll see you then.